Well, I'm Roberta Winters, President of the League of Women Voters of Bradley Township. We're here today to find out more about gerrymandering. It's local. This is part of our series to educate you about the ward lines and how they're drawn in Radnor Township and its impact on your vote and voice. We are most appreciative of Radnor Studio 21 for their continued support of this effort. Most importantly, we thank you, our viewers, who want to know more about how local decisions make a difference in whom we vote for and in how our elected officials serve us. Today, I'm delighted to have with me two of our state legislators who represent Radnor Township. Until the last redistricting in Pennsylvania, we had three state representatives. Now Radnor is included in only two, the 165th and the 166th districts. It's my pleasure to introduce newly elected representative Jen O'Mara from the 165th district and our veteran representative Greg Vitale. I'd like to begin with representative Vitale. If you have a map of our district for viewers to see, you can see the district that Greg represents and the pieces of our township that are in his district. Greg, could you describe for a little bit about what your district looks like and the towns and the counties that you serve? Well, first of all, thank you for uh, my district is most of Haverford Township, all but the first and ninth wards, uh, about half of Radnor Township, and uh, a little bit of Lower Marion Township in Montgomery County. Uh, Haverford and Radnor are in Delaware County. The uh, Montgomery County piece has uh, the second, um, uh, rather the fourth and eighth, eighth wards. Um, the, the, prior to that, prior to that, just uh, uh, apropos to the point of redistricting, I had all of Haverford Township. Um, uh, a little bit of Marp, a little bit of Radnor. What they try to do in a sort of a partisan redistricting action in order to sort of secure, Jan, the seat you have, um, they gave a very um, uh, Republican chunk of, 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 of my district, the, the third and fourth worlds of Marp, which you now have, and they gave it to, to um, I guess, it w which was then the Adolf seat to make that more Republican. And then they also, again, for partisan reasons, they took the first and ninth wards of Haverford Township. Uh, they gave it to what was then the McCosey seat, so that the Jamie Santora seat was uh, was was more Republican and tried to secure that that for Republicans. So 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 the shape of my district really uh, it was part of an effort to uh, you know, sort of write off my seat, the 166, so it would be a fairly solid Democratic seat, but sure up uh, Jen's, uh, Jen's seat for the Republicans and, and the other seats. So that's sort of the genesis of my district. Wow, so you keep, your district keeps evolving over time. Every 10 years, yep, yep. And, and the interesting thing is that even though that, that, that thing looks gerrymandered, it actually, the entire state plan was appealed to the PA Supreme Court, which was then actually a Republican PA Supreme Court. And they said, do it again. And what they did, and so, so this plan, even though it's gerrymandered, was actually approved by um, the PA Supreme Court. So that has already gone through the appeal process. So we have to wait until the next census and then the yep. process that follows. Well, when you look specifically at Radner's 166, the lines are certainly interesting. They tend to wiggle around a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's particularly in the areas around Wayne and Villanova. And at that time, the Radnor ward maps, which are shown on the current ward map boundaries, indicate that they're a lot smoother. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're following the way the district of Radnor was intended to be, your wards don't look anything you know, your district doesn't seem to follow the ward lines at all. Sure. No, I, no it, again, it's, it's a partisan process. The way the state lines are drawn, as distinguished from the federal lines. The federal lines, the congressional lines are drawn just like a bill. You know, just uh, pass the House, pass the Senate, sign what the governor done. State lines are done a little differently. You, ha you have a, a reapportioned commission set out in the PA Constitution, uh, represented from the Senate Dems, Senate Republicans, House Dems, House Republicans. Those four people select the neutral, but the neutrals, Usually not neutral. And, and, and this past time, it was Judge McEwen, who actually was uh, my, a law school teacher of mine, but, but also a very partisan Republican. He was a former Delaware County DA and so forth. He's, he's passed away. Nice guy. I like him, but, but he was a party guy. And um, so they just drew these lines to sort of effectuate 
what exactly you're talking about about before. It wasn't it wasn't about keeping municipalities together. There was no reason to break up heaven for township. It was all about maximizing Republican seats at that point. So the bottom line is the ward lines in Radnor were basically ignored when they threw the map. The, the driving force was, was politics. politics. Now, according to the instructions for redistricting election boundaries, local municipalities are required for us to look at our relationship in legislative and congressional boundaries. And it doesn't look like the redistricting lines of state did paid much attention to the wards in Radnor, and I'm not sure our wards in Radnor did paid much attention the other way around. So mm. we're not really looking at the, the state representatives when we're drawing our lines because mm. they don't look like yours and the state government didn't look very much at what they needed to do. Now, I think you basically said, Greg, that this is a partisan process and that's how it's all done. And I'd like to ask Representative O'Mara, since she's new to the game, how she figured out that her ward might have been gerrymandered in some way. Yes, well, first, I want to echo Greg and thank you, Roberta, and everyone at the League of Women Voters here in Rodner for all you do to educate citizens and make sure their voices are heard. It is very important work, so thank you. Uh, so the 165th district in, is all in Delaware County, unlike Greg, we're all in county, and it includes Springfield, most of minus one precinct, more in Barrow, um, most of Marple Township minus a ward that is cut out in Representative Quinn's district, and the other half of Radnor Township that is not covered by Greg. So I first learned how gerrymandered our district was when I went to vote for the first time in my old polling place. There are two polling booths there down in Springfield's third ward, uh, second precinct. One is for most of the residents. The other are for about 100 residents that live in a cul-de-sac that has been cut out to be put in Rep. Kruger Brown East District. And so I realized Right here in my backyard, we had a precinct split, which is against the Constitution. We're not supposed to split precincts unless it is required. I then went onto the Pennsylvania State House website. Now, this is before I was a candidate. I was just a citizen living in the 165th. And I looked up my district map. And the State House website actually has a really interesting interactive tool where you can look at the current map and you can select any year prior for redistricting and compare. So I looked at the 165th as it is today. And then I went and looked at the 2012 version, which was the most recent version. And specifically in Radnor, you could see it almost flip-flopped. So I started talking to folks in Radnor and realizing that there were neighborhoods where houses were cut out of the district. There were people who were saying, oh, I would live in the 165th, but their neighbors are across the street in mm -hmm. Greg's district. Mm -hmm. And so I quickly, I also looked up the representation of the 165th. And I saw that since 1978, one party had held power in that district. And to me, that means that, like Greg has said, these district lines were drawn to protect the incumbents. And that didn't feel like representative democracy to me, and it felt like a problem. And so I decided I would try to run and talk about gerrymandering along the campaign trail. And people were very confused by our process. The, the redistricting of Congress during the 2018 election cycle further added to that confusion. And I spent a lot of time educating voters on the different maps and, and how we may have fixed Congress temporarily, but state Senate and state House were still very gerrymandered. And I felt like until we fixed those issues, people's voices were not truly being heard. So when we look at your map of the 165th, we'll see it covers a very broad area and is kind of strangely shaped as well. Yes, I always say it looks sort of like a seahorse. It starts in Radnor and goes south down the Blue Route through Marple, Springfield, and ends in Morton. Um, I mean, in a lot of ways, those communities do make sense. You know, I spend a lot of time in Springfield and Marple. I come up to Radnor a lot. Morton is right in the same school district. So I understand why those communities are put together, but to cut out a precinct, to cut out a ward, to, to, if you look at the 165th in Radnor, precincts and wards are also split. So it just, like you said, the decisions didn't seem to match the current maps that existed at the local levels. And so when you look at 165th in Radnor, you know, you've got constituents along Eagle Road, then they cut out a piece of the Villanova campus, and then you avoided Garrett Hill, and then there's, you know, Roberts Road sticking out into Greg's district and not in your district. And it seems like, you know, you can figure out the district might have been drawn for reasons other than strictly numbers. Yes. 
or strictly to be yeah. contiguous and compact, which is what yeah. the guidelines would encourage us to do. Villanova University is an interesting highlight. I, I actually have three dorms of Villanova University in my district, and the rest of campus is in Greg's. And clearly, that does not make much sense. Why would a, a university be split? Well, and I think, so you know, that students actually have to change their voter registration when they've changed dorms at Villanova University. So that's not always encouraging them to vote because they have to go to a different place and actually change their registration. So we, we, that's an area that I think we need to explore further. Now, Representative Vitality, do you think um, the shapes, as Jennifer said and you said originally, are basically drawn for reasons other than technical accuracy, correctness, and continuous nature. Oh, sure, yeah, it's all politics. Um, yeah, and, and I just, I actually had the benefit of talking with uh, Steve Samuelson on the car ride up here. I just wanted to mention what, what he, he is saying. They're going to introduce a, a new bill, two new bills. Uh, they're going to put the co sponsorship memo out very soon have two new bills come out in March. They're actually, uh, Samuelson is gonna have, uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna bifurcate it. Samuelson is gonna have the congressional lines and Tom Mert uh, from Montgomery County is gonna do the house lines. And actually, you know, the reason they're bifurcating it is because to change the, and, and they're both gonna have that independent um, redistricting commission format that, that last uh, term's bill did, 722 did, but they're gonna, Keep the congressional and the uh, House and State House and Senate separate because you can do you can do the congressional lines with just a bill and that can be done very quickly. The the state and house lines ha has to be an amendment to PA's constitution, and we actually, according to Steve Samuelson, we still can squeeze in a change in the state and house lines if we if we do it. Um, like really quickly, we can if we pass it this term and like in the first six weeks of of, of the following term, you can you can probably just uh, squeeze it in. But it was interesting the way you know because the and people people should know you you uh, you know the, this difference between congressional and state lines. So that's that's what we have as far as the legislation goes uh, moving mo moving forward this term. And the local commissioners in Radnor determine how the wards are drawn. And so the last time it was drawn in Radnor, it was done behind closed doors. And then the final product was presented for commissioners. So we're trying to see if we can promote more transparency in that process. Because I know a lot of the decisions are made behind closed doors at the state level as well. Yeah. Really? <laughs> I'm shocked. <laughs> so I think, you know, a little more transparency. We know horse trading goes on, but I think we need to provide a little more transparency, not only because it's the right thing to do, but I think it helps people understand this complicated process, which impacts severely on your vote and your voice. Now, what do you think, Representative Malley, the citizens could do to perhaps change this? Well, I think citizens need to put pressure on their elected officials. <laughs> right? Putting pressure. Putting so, pressure, yes. That was um, not too much pressure. And <laughs> That, that starts with attending commissioner meetings, asking questions about how ward maps are drawn, understanding that process, contacting your state representatives, meeting with them to express your concerns. Um, there are also groups like Fair Districts, like the League of Women Voters, where if this is your big issue, because gerrymandering really does impact so many other issues, uh, become an advocate for fair districting and uh, go to Harrisburg, reach out to other state representatives across the aisle because, you know, for Greg and I are both Democrats, but we're in the minority party in Harrisburg. If we want to see this change, we need the majority party on board. And the best way to get politicians to pay attention is to have voters engage with them. So I would say send letters, send emails, schedule meetings, and don't let that pressure up until we see something really happen in Harrisburg. Um, one thing I'm trying to do to engage the uh, community around gerrymandering because we are about to enter 2020 which is our census year it's going to start the process i am working to schedule an educational event um, in hopefully in radnor township where we educate voters or constituents at the start of the day about gerrymandering about the process about the difference between state and congressional we have folks to answer questions and then we head out and participate in a 5k 
where we can run through, we're looking to see the map where we will start and end in the 165th, but potentially go through two other state house districts in a three and a half mile loop. And so to really show how in one neighborhood, we have three different districts coming together, because I know Rep Schusterman comes down off Wayne Avenue and the Chester County side of Radnor. So we're trying to put that event together where we can really educate people and show them how this is happening in our backyard. F5K sounds pretty cool. Yeah, make you be involved. Send me a notice. Don't worry. <laughs> and I know in the past, you know, the league has worked with Common Cause to develop with their district's PA, and there were a lot of citizens involved in that. And what do you think happened that derailed that whole process that seemed to have a lot of momentum? Oh, can I just mention one different thing right sure. now? Sure. Uh, I just wanted to, just so, just so the audience knows, I, Governor Wolf actually signed an executive order uh, with regard to redistricting uh, in November. It, oh. it created a, uh, a nine-month study um, and, and, and to, to kind of bring its results back to the legislature. Uh, David Thornburg's chairing up. I know former Congressman Charlie Dent's involved there, too. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see what recommendations that um, that report makes. I just kind of want to throw no, that there, out. That, that commission on redistricting includes Amanda Holt, who we oh, interviewed yeah, yeah. as well. And yeah, Susan yeah. Carty, the president of the League Excellent. of Women Voters. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's really exciting. I just felt we were so close, though, the last time. And then it sort of got derailed. Yeah. Do you remember that, Greg? Yeah, it was surprising because they put it in, in Daryl Medcalf's committee. you think he would kick it, <laughs> kick it right out of there. Um, I, yeah, because, I mean, again, it, 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 this is you know, one thing I've learned about you know, reform over the years you know, is the reason it's so tough to get reform is because um, the, the people who who are in a position to change the rules are the one who have won by the rules. And I think, you know, it's it's very tough for a politician to give up power. I think, you know, our leadership you know, wants this wants this power. So it, it, it's going to require something pretty drastic. The only reason we got the congressional lines changed was the uh, the court stepped in. It wasn't legislative action. And uh, it really requires something pretty drastic for uh, uh, a politician to give up power. And that's 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 the problem. And I, mean, I, that's the problem. I would like to add that both parties are responsible for gerrymandering. This is not a Republican or Democratic issue. This is the people in power took advantage and made maps so they could stay in power. And so the drastic thing that we need, in my opinion, is civic engagement, is constituents learning about gerrymandering and fighting against it. Because until they stop politicians from shopping for votes than politicians on both sides of the aisle are trying to shop for votes. And so it's really important that we hold all of our leadership accountable to their district. Well, that's our lead goal. So hopefully we will get there. I have a real practical question for you. And given that Radner does not include either of, let's say, the majority of voters in your district are not solely from Radner. Like you have a, most of you have a, you know, you're a Haverford man and you're like Springfield lady. Mm -hmm. yeah. If there's a project and there's only one grant to go to, say, your district in your district, I'm going to ask Greg first. Suppose Haverford and Radnor applied for the same grant and you could only get one of them. Would you, how would you make that decision? I, you know, you just try to be an honest broker. I mean, you just try to look where, where the need is the greatest. I mean, I, normally you're in a situation where in the course of a legislative term or over a couple of terms, you, you have multiple opportunities so you can keep it fair. At the end of the day, you know, people are people. I mean, we were talking about that, that Radnor flooding issue like mid-August. Uh, those people uh, in the first war just got killed and I walked the streets and talked with them. And, uh, you know, that's that's where I want to put the money, because, I mean, when you just lose your home, that's more in, uh, important than park equipment, be it in Haverford Township or Lower Marion Township. So it's, it's just a matter. And in the end, people elect you for good judgment. And that's what you're that's that's how you're evaluated at the end of the day. So it's just a matter of applying that good judgment. And, and if you if you don't apply it correctly, you're going to find yourself out of a job over time. So what about you, Jen? If there was a project that was say slides and swings in Radnor Township or slides and swings in Springfield would where the bulk of your constituents come from impact your decision or might not? Well, 
I wouldn't say that it depends on where the bulk of the constituents come from. It matters where the needs are greatest. And so I've spent a lot of time so far, and I've only been in since January 1st, um, mm -hmm. but I've spent time meeting with folks from all over my district. I've, I've been in Morton Barrow Hall. I've been in Roderick Township Building. I've been going to commissioner meetings in Springfield and Marple. And what I'm determining is where are the issues? And they're very different. So the issues that Radnor are facing in terms of flooding, there's a lot of PennDOT concerns, are not the same as the food scarcity that I'm facing in Morton Barrow. And so my job is to get state resources here to fix those problems and to fix those needs. And so what I'm trying to figure out is, is, is a grant the solution or is having a policy hearing where we get the press here and state agencies here is that the solution? So I think it all depends on what the problems are and what the needs are. And we as state representatives have this ability to bring attention to these needs and to get state agencies to come and do their part. And so I haven't yet had to decide between one or the other, but none of my areas are facing the same issue. So I don't think I will be faced with here or there for this one grant because you know we need trail and open space development in Springfield we need flood mitigation in Radnor they're two very different issues and they can be solved using different resources well let's hope it doesn't become us or them right yes yeah well it's our job to make sure that doesn't happen right right and and marshalling limited resources which again is just congestion mm -hmm. well I know Radnor's voice is divided between two legislative districts so it does sometimes make a difference and we know that right now it appears that both of you are similarly on the same page. Mm -hmm. So it seems like we have a strong voice that you both sort of share. If our districts are split between two different representative districts who have very different views, then it, you, two legislators, not necessarily you and Greg, could cancel each other's vote out. Vote on vote on a specific, policy issues right. in Havertown, but not really vote on you know, how we treat local issues. I mean, uh, I'm, I'm glad Jen's here, but with regard to uh, Alex Trump, I mean, if, I mean, if there's a problem with, with a, a trucks ramming into a bridge, it's not a Democrat or Republican problem. I mean, you, mm -hmm. just, you just try to solve it. Now, you know, you might get into issues like reproductive choice in Harrisburg or environmental protection. That's a different deal. But I think just as far as if you're concerned about local community, things like that. If, if you elect good people, they're going to work together. That's very encouraging. Now, on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Radnor, I wish to thank you both, Representative O'Mara and Representative Vitale. Your time and insight on local decisions that impact how wards are drawn and, in turn, how boundaries in legislative districts may be have set has been invaluable. We are again indebted to Radnor Studio 21 for their ongoing support of this educational endeavor. Gerrymandering, it's local. To you, our viewers, we celebrate your commitment to helping us make democracy work. It's your vote and it's your voice. Thank you.